Okay, so here we are in problem uh, 8C in section 11.3. I want to do a better job on this proof. Notice they're telling us that K and L are parallel lines. So the top and the bottom lines are parallel. And then they give us these facts here, the measure of angle CAD. What's that? CAD, that's this angle right here, is four times the measure of BAC. So this right here is four times the measure of BAC, B-A-C. So call this Y and call this 4Y. Make sense? I'm calling this one Y, C-A-D, and then this one will be 4, to, or I'm sorry, I'm calling, I'm calling B-A-C Y, and then so C-A-D is 4Y. Okay, so now what about, um, what about their... Their second fact, they say the measure of angle CBE, where's that? CBE here, is four times the measure of ABC. ABC. This one, that's ABC. So hold on, before I put in another letter, we can actually figure out what this, let's get rid of this for a minute. We can actually figure out what this has to be right here because we have the other two triangle, uh, two angles in the triangle. Right? So this right here, this angle, must be 180 minus x minus y. Right? Because I have the other two angles in the triangle, x and y. So that one, the triangle has to total 180. So this one here must be 180 minus x minus y. I just made, right? Okay, and now this angle here, they're telling me, CBE, C, C, B, E, is four times as big as A, B, C. It's four times as big as A, B, C. Four times that. So it's four times 180 minus X minus Y. Right? It's got to be four times. Okay. Now, now we're in business. Now let's extend this side. Coming on down like that. Now why? Why am I doing that? Why do I care about that? Because that'll show me I've got a Z now. I do that to make a Z. This is the top of the Z. This is the arc of the Z. And this, right, if you make a Z, a backward Z or a forward Z, doesn't matter, those two angles, alternate interior angles, will be equal given that the top and the bottom are parallel lines, which they said they are. So this is also right here, isn't it? This angle is the same thing right there. Okay, great. So what? Well, now we're almost there. Now we can figure out how big this angle here is. Let me draw an arrow way over there to it. How do I know? Well, it's the third angle in a triangle also. It's got to be, give a little room here, it's got to be 180 minus other two triangle angles added, right? Because the three angles in a triangle have to make 180. So it's got to be, this other angle here has got to be 180 minus the other two angles added. What are the other two angles added? Well, they are 4y add this one, right? That's the other one here. 4 times 180 minus x minus y. Good so far. And so what's that going to be? 180 minus, let's take care of the inside first. Boom, boom, boom. 4 times 180, use your calculator, 720 minus 4x minus 4y. These guys drop out. 180 minus 720 plus 4x. Was that too quick? Here, maybe I better take that slower. Here, let me help. I'll take it a little slower. Okay, so these guys dropped out. 4y minus 4y. I've got 720 minus 4x left. And then that minus sign is going to distribute. So we get 180 minus 720. Over here, let's bring it up. I need a little more room. <laughs> Long problem. 180 minus 720 plus 4x, which is 
what is that, minus 540, use your calculator, plus 4x. Okay, great, so what is that? Remember where that came from? That's this angle here. Okay, so what? Last step. These two are one side of a straight line. So my final step, let me come up here. So x plus the uh, one I got right here, minus 540 plus 4x, must equal 180 because they make one side of a straight line. So 180 equals x plus 4x, 5x minus 540. We're almost there. Add the 540. Five x is seven twenty. Last step, divide by five. Oops, that's a five there. X equals one forty four. Like like that. That makes sense. So that's pretty tricky, isn't it? A lot of steps on that. Feel free to replay that to follow that logic carefully.